Welcome to another podcast of the Constitution of Manchester United. Hope you guys are enjoying your Tuesday morning so far. It's currently 5 minutes to 11. I might end at least. I'm going to go in a few stuff as it relates to the press conference of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. As you can see, I'm looking on the right side and that's the left hand of your side. I have a few talking points and notes that, um, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, hold on. At Ole Gunnar Solskjaer spoke about in his press conference. First of all, he was spo- he was asked about the form of Fulham because again we are going to play against Fulham tomorrow, and Fulham haven't been keeping up with Fulham or any other side that um, extensively in the Premier League other other than Manchester United, but it's it's fair to say that Fulham hold on let me see where Fulham is in the table. It's fair to say that Fulham is uh i don't think they are really dropping points at this moment in time because they drew against spurs and i mean spurs are butlers but i think they're doing decent let me check the table give me a second okay that's a lie <laughs> that's a lie that's a, that's a lie so scrap that scrap all of that they're actually 18th in the league they're actually 18th in the league so uh, they're in the real relegation zone. So me carrying a cupcake, cupcake in them and talking about, you know, they're in decent form. They're in a good position in the table. So they're not going to be in a position or in a situation to get relegation. That's a lie. Actually, they are in 18th. So, but he was asked and he was, you know, he wasn't really harsh with his evaluation and assessment of the players of Fulham because this is the thing. This is the Premier League. This is the Premier League. It may not be the prime uh, 2009 Premier League. It may not be the early 2000s Premier League, but this is the Premier League period. In the Premier League, any side can beat any side. That's number one. Even in the current state of COVID, any side can beat any side. So you could be in ninth place with 19 losses and one win or one draw and you have no wins this season but you play against a side that's like in the top four <laughs> and you get one penalty in the nine minutes <laughs> and you scored a penalty when I get them you see life is funny in the Premier League bro life is funny this is the type of anxiety and competitive nature of the Premier League is me so any side can beat any side it's an even kill it's a jungle in the Premier League it's an even it's People are killing each other. <laughs> I mean, the strength survive, but I mean, the strongest survive, but even the weakest, they can pounce on you. And that is something we cannot allow to happen to us tomorrow as we play against Fulham. Is if Fulham is going to be full of it tomorrow, is it because they don't want to lose? Um, I mean, they have like lo- nine draws? No way. About nine losses or something like that. You know, and uh, since we're on the top of the tree, um, we, we are going to need three points. We are going to need three points. Um, the next thing he was asked about, he was asked about was Bruno's form and Bruno's fitness. Because people are saying that, you know, Bruno hasn't been at it ever since probably the last or for the past three games. You have to understand that Bruno, Bruno Fernandes is not a 2004 Ronaldinho. <laughs> Bruno Fernandes is a human being, just like Ronaldinho, is me. Bruno, even if he's tired, I don't think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer would even say that he's tired in a press conference, is me? Because that is going to set reference for people to put in English papers that, you know, breaking news topic. Bruno Fernandes, stated by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, is tired and he is defeated. And he said defeat as to why Bruno Fernandes has not been performing so far. So he, do, he didn't want to even say that. And even if he wasn't, well, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said that he wasn't, you know, he wasn't tired. And he even mentioned that since Bruno Fernandes got his fourth player of the month, I don't think he's like had a, like a, like a steep dip in form. Um, so he was he just dismissed that off the table. He just put that in the, in the board. And he was asked about um, 
Diallo's impression? Like, what is your impressions of Ame Diallo, your new signing? You know, he basically said, you know, my man is doing bits in a uh, hold on. He's doing bits in the in training. You know, he's looking fine. Um, and he was also asked. No, <laughs> these are the type of questions. This is where I have to get on some coaches' case because in the Premier League, because a lot of persons hold on, so you guys can have a closer look at me. A lot of persons get on Jose Mourinho click. Jose Mourinho's case when my, when my man was at Manchester United because when my man was at Manchester United and he was asked crazy questions or what he think would be stupid questions the way he would answer it was not as some would say a politically correct or as an a social and acceptable way of answering the question because basically if you ask Jose Marina a stupid question, he was going to call you out on that stupid question. Period. <laughs> Period. This press, uh, this presser in the con in the press conference, asked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I guess he was somewhat nervous, so I just wanted to talk just because he was there. He asked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer if he's enjoying his job. He's enjoying his job. And what he finds enjoyable about his job. And what he least finds enjoyable about his job. Bro. I know this video won't get at you. But if you are asking these questions. If you don't like my pe <laughs> people from my backyard or hometown would say. If you don't have nothing to say, do not say it. If you don't have anything better to say, just keep quiet. Okay? If you don't have nothing to say or nothing to ask, keep quiet. Why are you asking Ole Gunnar Solskjaer about the current state of Manchester United, of his job? Why are you asking about the lease and what he enjoys about his job? That's none of your concern, bro. That's none of your concern. No, all he's gonna search for being nice, you know. He didn't really directly address it, say, Man, he didn't go ask me those types of questions in the press conference. We're going to play against Fulham. This is me, so ask me uh, uh, questions based on Fulham. He, you know, he gave some commentary which I ain't gonna get into, but bro, again, bro, do not be asking this. Well, he, I don't think he supports Manchester United, so I don't really care that much. But these are the types of questions. <laughs> I'm not really going to segue, but um, so we have Fulham tomorrow, right? We have Fulham tomorrow. Um, he was asked about certain players that might be that he's going that might you know is on the fringes, like for example, Jesse Lingard and other players that might leave Manchester United. He said that he's open to a couple of players leaving, but he doesn't want the squad depth to decrease. Where, if there are players injured, there is no one to bank on as like a standby player, or as a second stringer, or so something like that. So, he spoke and I think you know I don't think he would sell Jesse Lingard this transfer window. Um, but then again, but then again we'll see. Then again we'll see. Um. So you are playing Fulham tomorrow, and um, like I said, Fulham is going to be full of it tomorrow because again they're in 18th. Hold on, they're in 18th place, um, and they they're going to they're going to look for points. They're going to look for points. They're going to be playing at I think Cottage Road is their place, um, of worship and playing, but Manchester United can actually go to Fulham and actually get three points. Fulham is going to try their best in their interest to actually frustrate Manchester United Fulham. They're going to try they ain't go play football against Manchester United because they don't want to be played off they don't want to be spunked at their own backyard. So they they're not going to do that. So Scott Parker Scott Parker's Fulham is not going to be doing that. It goes without saying, we're on top of the league right now. 
this is a big ask for us. This is a big ask for us. Not everyone can succumb to the pressure you now to off being on top of the league. So we'll crumble. So we'll crumble. Some play uh, some sides will, you know, slide by on the side way. Manchester United is going to play Fulham tomorrow. What we need to be aware of is that we need to be using players tough um um see i don't even know why my tongue is being twisted right now in terms of verbiage speech what's the word i'm looking for we have to be very tactful tomorrow and professional professional is rashford supposed to be dropped tomorrow i would not say no but no he should not be dropped tomorrow but i'll say this he needs to be playing on the left wing he needs to be playing on the left wing Start Greenwood on the right wing. Let me get into the starting lineup. So David De Gea, of course. Wan Bissaka at right back. I would like Eric Bay to start. Har Maguire will be starting because he's the captain. Given that Luke Shaw is in form, he'll be starting. Scott McTommy, I believe he'll be starting. Paul Pogba, I believe, will be starting. Um, Fred didn't really do that much against Liverpool, so I don't think my man is gonna get us a, a starting place. Now I'm going with the lineup. I think not only gonna search guard. I'm going with the lineup that I think. So I believe Pogba will be starting on the left wing tomorrow, and he'll be indoctrinating Fred. Well, with that being said, I think he Fred has been always in the lineup when Pogba is playing left wing. But with the lineup, I think. Pogba in the double pivot with, um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> this is going to be a funny one because I can't. Pogba and, and Scott McTominay cannot play. Um, that midfield is going to get overrun. Two slow players. That midfield is going to get overrun. So that is an indictment on me. So to concede defeat and, and raise white flag, I'll say this. I'll play Fred with Scott McTominay as a double pivot and then Pogba on the left wing, Rashford on the right wing, <laughs> Cavani on the bench, of course, and Marcel up top. And Bruno Fernandes will be the number 10, of course. Goes without saying. Now, people are saying that Marcel should be dropped. People are saying that Rashford should be dropped. Right now, we cannot be doing that. Rashford may not be in the form he was in couple months ago but we cannot be dropping Rashford right now we cannot be dropping Rashford right now and Martial I question Martial's position in this in the style of play of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because when I was looking on the heat map heat map in terms of the position being averaged in the second half and the first half if I didn't know any better, I would think that Marcel was a midfielder. Because based on what I was seeing, my man was on the left side of midfield. Bruno Fernandes was actually ahead of him. And Rashford was a striker. That was the statics. If you look on the heat and the average positions the players were spotted in. Rash Rashford was striker. Pogba was somewhat behind Bruno Fernandes. Marcel was <laughs> Marcel was probably like a half but like he was a midfielder. Bro, we have to do better <laughs> we have to do better than this, bro. We have to do better than this. It's good enough to say that Marcel links play, but that is not the best display of a striker. Marcel is playing a number nine. That's what he wanted. He needed a number nine. He wanted back his number nine to get in line with goals. You cannot get goals from midfield unless you're Gerard. Uh, scores are even Frank Lampard and those play and those players are even managers now. So we cannot be playing this nigga in midfield. He needs to be playing up top. Marcel needs to be Marcel got twenty two goals last season. Same as Rashford last season. We cannot allow this Bridgen to be dropping in midfield and making play. He's not a Giroud type. He's not a Manzukic type. He's not a Gomez type. 
this is a brethren that can get goals he can link play he can offer this play of uh dropping deep into the build up play but this is not this is not where he needs to be he needs to be in the box scoring goals scoring goals and saving souls that's what my brethren need to be doing in the box that's anthony marcia let us not say well he's doing decent because he's linking play he's uh dribbling past players that's not the mo of a striker bro that's not him maybe that's maybe that's their modern day type definition of a striker but i'm one of those old school young youths that believe that a striker should score goals he could have the worst game for 89 minutes but even in that one minute if he score a goal he has done the work as a striker so i don't know where you get this linkage of play from that divine that defines a striker So anyway, I believe that Marcel will be starting up top. My prediction, my prediction is that we beat my, uh, Fulham 2-0 tomorrow. 2-0 tomorrow. I don't see much from Fulham. I don't think they're offering much. I mean, they have Mitrovic up top. I think he was a quality striker a couple seasons ago. But, nah. Do think um I mean he has the potential but honestly before Igala came in that's when we should have gotten Mitrovic. You see me? Because I think he's a quality striker. I think he's quality striker. But um yeah, so that's my prediction. And of course you guys don't so leave your predictions down below in the comment section. Like and subscribe to the channel. Share the, the channel to your uh if you are family members that's Manchester United driven. Share this channel. It's a young channel. And uh, yeah, leave your prediction down below who you think will be starting for Manchester United and who will um, probably play up top, whether it's Cavani or Martial. And what is your prediction? Leave your predictions down below. With that being said, I'll show it to you guys. I might do a match reaction. Not sure yet, but leave your predictions down below. Nevertheless, and I'll show it to you guys in the next video podcast. Peace. I'm out.